Hi guys, okay, so I decided I'd make a video today concerning the Lenovo um, ThinkPad that I got. Um, in, this, in this video, I want to actually show how to replace the hard drive. Um, no, nothing is wrong with the hard drive in this case, but I bought a solid state hard drive, so I wanted to replace the physical, the normal hard drive, which has spinning parts in it, with the solid state hard drive. There's also a claim that um, if you replace with an SSD, um, hard drive which is a solid state drive with no moving parts that it actually uses a little less uh, battery from you know when you're remotely using the laptop um, so that's what I'm going to try today um, so stay tuned while I go ahead and do that opening up the Lenovo ThinkPad the I believe it's the one to the one e ThinkPad which is uh, 11 inches in size. It's really small. The first thing you want to do of course is, is, is pull out the battery when working on the Lenovo ThinkPad. So before you start, unplug and uh, take out the battery. Uh, so stay tuned. Hopefully you wouldn't see too much of the camera moving but you may in the process of me getting started here. Alright guys, okay so we're back. This is the best angle I could probably get it. Of course this is the ThinkPad here and this is the underneath of the ThinkPad and the ThinkPad comes with three pieces you would have seen that in my last video where I opened it up to put RAM in it and essentially you want to take this out and today I'll be replacing the hard drive with a Kingston SSD which is one of the cheapest hard drives SSDs out there in fact Kingston is actually not a really good brand anymore any longer um, but based on the price it was a good buy at that point in time so that's what I like about the Lenovo this Lenovo is very easy to open up so I replaced the RAM last time and this is the hard drive here and this is what I want to replace this time so the first thing you'll notice, this is actually the first time I'm opening it up in terms of the hard drive. Um, and the first thing, so this might be take a little longer than if it was a planned video. But I see that there are noticeably two screws holding onto the drive. The Kingston comes, this is the Kingston uh, solid state drive that I'll be replacing with 120 gigs, 10 times faster. So it says... Um, as I say, if you could afford a better one, like maybe a Samsung, I would go the Samsung. But this is just going to be a basic laptop. Uh, not too much stuff will be stored on the local hard drive except the operating system. Uh, most of the stuff will be on Google Drive most likely for me. So, I'll always have a backup. Alright, so you can see there's two uh, pieces, two screws again here. So, as for us to be able to access... So it seems magnetic. So there's some sort of protective plate. Alright, okay. So the protective plate is on it, but you need to pull the drive out, it seems. So we need to slide the drive. Now you try not to touch the circuit board like I just did. You use this piece and you just slide it backward or forward, however you want. And the drive came out. Now, <coughs> one of the other things I didn't like was the idea of this little laptop being coming with a Seagate drive. I don't normally like Seagate drives. I find that they fail a lot of the times. Uh, Crossing about a year and a half going on two years I constant use these drives tend to fail This I can see is a 7200 rpm drive. So I will keep it. You can see there's Seagate written on it and um, You see 7200 rpm on the drive. So this is a fairly good drive and I'll keep this Most likely for some sort of backup purposes or to put it back in case the SSD ever fails 
but as you see the drive itself has this plate which was part of the inside here so we need to take this plate back out just in case and hopefully fit that into the the uh, the Kingston drive so on the sides you notice that it is connected to the hard drive by this screw so two screws so we're taking it out hope the hope the camera will pick it up now because I'm holding it up trying to show you guys it I'm going to look a little bit clumsy doing that that's only because really the for the making of this video as you can see this plate comes out like that and there's also a serial number here a Lenovo serial number on it so that's good the unboxing I got this I think for 43 US my mom went away and um, I, it was a good opportunity for her to bring this back so I didn't have to really pay too much to clear it Now, SSD drives come in different form as well. Eh? The SSD drives like this, uh, they come particularly, this is like a shielded SSD drive. It's about the same, this is about the same size as the two and a, two and a half inch uh, uh, normal hard drives. Uh, but the thing about it is that some of the, you can actually get SSD drives without this uh, protective layer um, I think they referred to unshield as unshielded or something like that um, but this is uh, going to fit in just the same way that this piece this plate will have to fit back in as well too so we're gonna try to put that back together I think the plate will go like this let me just make sure so we need to make sure that the pins will line up here all right so that's the first thing in order to decide which way it goes so we know for for certain that it'll go this way so that from that we could figure out that this piece will have to come back here this piece will have to line up here make sure that the pinholes line up back again and just screw them back in Good. So we put the plate back in, as you could probably, hopefully, see here. The plate, two screws, left and right. And of course, if these screws are not put in properly, they will not be able to fit properly. And now we are going to put the drive back in. And put our screws back in.
and that's it. Drive secure, everything secured. Now we put back on our plate, back plate. We'll screw this up. And that's pretty much uh, replacing the hard drive for the Lenovo. Now one of the things that you need to remember is that when you put a new hard drive in, it will not have an operating, in, an operating system installed on the hard drive. So you will have to get your own operating system like Windows and reinstall. And so in this case, I will have to install Windows 8 on it and then upgrade it to Windows 10, which is another process altogether that takes up a lot of time. The upgrade process isn't one of my most favorite processes. Now we need to confirm as well that the drive is installed. So we will need to boot into what is known as the BIOS. Don't forget to put in back your battery. Good. So now we need to try to get to the BIOS. So let's give it a boot. Most likely F1. We want to get to the BIOS. So BIOS is see if I could get to it. Right, so we're in the BIOS here, and you may not be able to see that from, from the angle. Let's try to change that. Now you can see the BIOS. Normally it's F1 to get to the BIOS. And we need to look at Serial, ETA, SATA, good. Huh, it doesn't really tell me. It doesn't show me anything as yet. Hmm. Interesting enough, the BIOS doesn't actually detect anything, so... I won't be able to apparently see it from here. I guess the only way is when we install Windows that it will do. Well, anyways, so thanks a lot for viewing this video, and I hope again to see you guys soon uh, with another video. If you like this video, please uh, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel when you get a chance, and I'll see you guys again soon. Take care, bye bye.